Throughout my photo manipulation journey, I've come across many mistakes. I've learned it the hard way through self-experiments and it took time to figure out the right thing. So if you have just started with photo manipulation, I thought it might be helpful to you to share them with you and how to fix them. Although this video is more for beginners and if you are an intermediate or an expert, please feel free to grab a cup of coffee and tag along. And also let me know in the comments if you have come across any other mistakes that I do not mention in the video. Our first mistake will be not using high quality stock images. Since all photo manipulations start with stock images, let's go over a couple of mistakes in choosing them. It's so easy to just grab an image from Google and slap it onto your Photoshop composition. But please don't use low quality images as it will ruin the quality of your finished artwork. Also you may get into other troubles like copyright issues and whatnot. So always get licensed, high quality images, be it free or paid. Moreover that keeps you future proof and you will also be able to commercialize your artworks and sell them. If you are not ready to get paid stocks, you can absolutely resort to these awesome free websites that give you high quality stock images. A couple of them would be Unsplash, Pexels, Pixabay, PXR, Freepik with Attribution and even DeviantArt. For DeviantArt, do check the stock usage rules in the description section of that image. The next mistake is not using correct stock images. What I mean by this is, if you select stock images matching your final composition, things can be a whole lot easier at a later point. Like in this composition I did for Benny's Alien Photoshop battle, I used rail tracks that have a light direction matching my final composition. So imagine if I took a different image and how long it would have taken me to correct the fine details like removing the highlights at the wrong areas and then repainting them in the correct places. For this, I spent a good amount of time searching for perfect stocks before starting the actual photo manipulation. It has happened many times that for a 7-8 to eight hours photo manipulation, I have spent some extra 3-4 to four hours finding the correct stock images. Our next mistake, to start early with the color grading. If you are an absolute beginner, I would suggest you place all the stock images before you start to color grade. What happens is, our eyes miss issues with the placement or clipping and masking as it gets distracted by the color grading, and the final result will look unpolished and may contain errors. So it's always wise to cut and place the elements, make the alignments correct, and then start applying the color grading on the individual objects. Not getting the fundamentals right. Take small steps. Try to create simple compositions with maybe just a subject and a background and then try to color match everything, get the alignment and perspectives right, create correct highlights and shadows. Trying to create complex compositions early without getting the basics right might ingrain mistakes and they can get carried along in the future. Not paying attention to shadows. We all love doing highlights and making everything glow. But shadows are absolutely equally important along with the highlights and compositions will not look good at all without them. I'll take this one again. Our subject is facing opposite to the light here so this would not look half as good if I remove the shadows. Also here I painted some cast shadows of the hand and the sword and that helps bring up the realism in the picture. So be sure to add the shadows as well as you paint the awesome highlights. Maybe I'll do a future video on shadows, we'll update you accordingly. The next mistake, overusing and misusing effects. As a beginner, we often get carried away with using effects like depth blur, sharpening and so on. For depth blur, it won't even apply if you are creating a wide angle shot. Technically, it occurs due to a shallow depth of field of a lens for portraits or macro shots. Instead, you can try creating depth in a scene using the atmospheric haze. I won't explain this over here, as I have a very detailed video on the topic. You can check it out from the link in the description section. But even if depth blur is used, it is often seen as applied on the entire image using tools like field blur. Instead of applying as a whole on the entire image, it would give better results if the blur is applied to specific objects and the blur won't bleed out to other objects which are at a different distance from the observer. The same goes for sharpening and it is often misused and overused. Distant objects should usually won't be that sharp and the overall sharpening on the images may be masked out in distant areas. The next mistake, rushing to create more. As beginners, it might be a tendency to hurry and rush to create more and post it on the socials to favor the algorithm and gain visibility. But that is quite the wrong practice as a beginner. It is always wise to spend as much time on a piece as possible to get it right on the technicalities. Even I would suggest giving breaks between the edits and revisiting maybe after some hours or even a day and I'm sure you will find new issues and mistakes with the composition. I will also give a bonus tip on the mistakes. Sticking only to photo manipulation if you create photo manipulation. Now, this may sound paradoxical, but photo manipulation is a form of art, and I see a lot of videos on other forms of art. 
Just to name a few of them in digital art and concept art, I follow Tyler Edlin, Mark Brunet, Marco Bucci, Ima Dawan, Walid Fegali. I also follow James Gurney and Andrew Tischler a lot for traditional paintings. I even check out content on 3D creators like CG Geek and Critical Chance and even see videos on photography and videography. The point is, I'm not asking you to do a digital painting or a traditional painting, but the underlying concepts like light and shadow, rules and composition are more or less the same in all forms of art. So learning concepts from various places really help to learn and understand the subject holistically. Do give it a try and you will see the difference it makes. So that would be all for today and if you have come across any other mistakes, feel free to add them in the comments below. And if this video helped you, please like it and share it with your friends so that it may also help them as well. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos and I will see you in the next one and till then, enjoy creating.